Start a business, they said. It'll be easy, they said. And life will be rainbows, sunshines, lollipops, and butterflies. Well, sorry to break it to you, but I don't think they were telling you the whole truth. Hey, I'm Will, and if you're new to my channel, I talk about entrepreneurship, marketing, lead generation, and building and growing businesses. Today, I wanted to share five things that I wish someone had told me, or I wish that I had known when I started my business. Now, just to give you some context, I've been in business for about seven years now. My first business that I started was a marketing company, which is currently doing about a million dollars in revenue, not profit, revenue. And I've got a couple of other businesses we've acquired and on the process of acquiring. So, you know, I've got a little bit of experience here and I wanted to share with you five things that I really wish I'd known or really wish someone had told me that could have saved a lot of heartache and hardship. Now, the very first thing, Right. If you're thinking about starting a business, if you want to break through the nine to five and do your own thing, very first thing you've got to know is it takes time. Now, when I started my business, I had been sold these dreams of, you know, in six months time, I'm going to be doing 10K, 20K, 50K, a million dollars a year. And I hate to break it to you, but this stuff, right, this building a business, doing this for yourself does take a bit of time. It's not going to be done instantly because you're not going to be able to, well, you're not going to be the entrepreneur that you need to be to do what you need to do. And let me explain. Now, the first two years of my business, right? I was in IT before running my business. I was extremely introverted. I couldn't talk on the phone. I used to have massive phone phobia. And so one of the things I had to do was get better at being uncomfortable with sales calls, with calling random strangers and trying to pitch them ideas and get them to work with me. And until I could figure that part out, my business could not grow. Now, as much as I wish I had done it sooner or I'd done it faster, it did take me about 18 months to really get a lot more comfortable with doing all of that. So if you're in a situation where you don't necessarily have business building skills, you haven't necessarily come from a strong sales background or a marketing background, just give yourself a bit more time than you think you need. It's gonna take all the pressure off. And I know you might hate your job or you wanna get out of there as soon as possible, but it's always good to have a bit of buffer. So you can take your time to figure things out, to learn, to grow, and to ultimately be more comfortable when you do decide it's time to leave. So that's the first thing I wish I'd known. I wish someone had told me, hey, it's all well and good that you're doing a business. You've got a side hustle. You've got a couple of clients as a side hustle. Just keep your job for a little bit longer, like three more months. Just keep it, just bear with it for a little bit more. Because I think I would have made better decisions because I wasn't so worried. Well, I wouldn't have been so worried about cash and I wouldn't take it on the wrong clients, which really slowed down our growth in the beginning. So that's number one. Now, the second thing I wish someone had told me or shared with me was around discipline. One, I kind of left my job a little bit too early, as I kind of said, um, but what I did leave was this massively different experience, right? Because you think about working for somebody else, you have to turn up on time, you have to make certain decisions, you're giving a lot of constraints and a lot of criteria that you have to work towards, and you can't go outside of your box. Now, that kind of sucks, but it's also kind of good because you've got someone who enforces discipline, who enforces office hours, enforces that between nine to five, you're doing what you should be doing. When you start going on this entrepreneurship experience, there's none of that, right? You are responsible for what you do. So at the very beginning, I had all this time that, you know, I could dedicate to my business, but because I didn't have the discipline and, you know, the mental fortitude to say, hey, these are my hours. I need to be working here. I would do crazy things like play games till two in the morning or, you know, do things like I had a little bit of free time and I go and watch a Netflix series or something like that. Now, if you're really serious about your business, I kind of figured this out about six months in, okay, I think I really have to set a schedule. I have to go and you know, just really make sure this time that I'm spending on my business gets worked on my business. So that's the second part, just you know, get accountability as soon as you can, whether it's from your partner, whether it's from a friend, whether it's from someone else, you know, even an entrepreneurial group online, whatever it is, get someone to hold you accountable and get disciplined with your health, with your learning, with your work time, right? Point number two. Point number three is a little bit different, and this is something you probably want to think about before you even go into business, but it's the idea of can you find a business partner? So this one might be more of a case of, you know, do what I tell you rather than do what I did. But when I started my business, I was of the idea, I need to go by myself. I want to make all the decisions. I want to be the guy in charge, right? I want to have complete freedom and autonomy over my own life. Now, thing is, that is okay for some businesses. 
But looking backwards, if I had brought on a business partner or, you know, work with someone else on the business together, I think we could have got a lot further and a lot faster. So my first business, we grew to a million in revenue and it's just me as the sole owner and founder of the business. And it's great. Don't get me wrong. You know, if we want to do things like take trips to go and network with people or find new clients, if I want to go to mastermind programs, if I want to, you know, potentially buy a new vehicle for my business. It's great because I don't have to run it by anyone or get it approved. But at the same time, all the businesses I'm buying going forward, all the new ventures we're starting, all the businesses I'm investing in, I'm looking for businesses where there's a partner, right? Where there's two people. It, you know, if you look at the stats around the businesses that are successful, that, that grow, that you know get pushed a lot further than most, you'll find that there's generally two or three partners or co-founders in those businesses. Now, the reason why is because you know, if you find someone with a comp- complementary skill set to you, you can play off each other's strengths and grow much, much faster. Also, when you have downtime, right, when you're not feeling it or you're feeling low, you've got someone that can back you up, that can support you. You've got someone to bring some ideas with and, you know, someone else with a lot of experience that, you know, you can bring in and sh- have shared experiences. And so for that reason, I think if it's possible, if it's something you can do, think about the idea of bring on a business partner or joining with someone else and actually doing this um, as a partnership, you know, set up as a company, all that kind of stuff. Speak to your accountant about that. But having a co-founding business, I think, could make a big difference if this is your first business. Okay, so point number four is around what you're going to be doing or what matters. Now, when I first started my business, I thought everything matters. I thought I needed an amazing website. I thought I needed amazing social media stuff. I needed to, you know, dress in a suit and do all this kind of stuff here. But I'm telling you that none of that actually matters, right? I'm going to tell you what actually does. Now, I've got a client that we work with and client, I've become good, good friends with him. His business does $150 million a year, right? $150 million. If you looked at his website, you would see his website's got probably two pages on it, just a simple homepage and contact us page. And it looks like it was built in the eighties, right? This is a business that works with some of the top companies in the country, $150 million a year growing year after year, quite very profitable, I should say. And the website kind of sucks, right? It doesn't kind of suck. It actually sucks. And so it just goes to show you that a lot of what you think is necessary to grow a business might not actually be that necessary. So what does matter, right? Not your business cards, not the website. All that matters is you're solving a problem that someone is willing to pay to have it solved. And all you really need is customers. So even if you have a super simple one-page website that just kind of tells people what you do, but you work on the customer acquisition, you work on cold emailing people, you're working on going to networking functions to find clients, you work on whatever you need to do to get your next client through, your business guaranteed will be way more successful than if you spent all of your time working on your social media first, right? Working on your website or all of that kind of stuff. Because that stuff, while it's kind of nice to have, it's not a revenue generating activity. And in the very beginning, all you need to think about is generating revenue. Now, the fifth one is more about you, right? You and I as entrepreneurs. One of the things that I've come to realize, and it's taken me a little while, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of the most profound things that you'll start to see, is that as you go into business, as you spend more time in business and grow and learn, you become an entirely different person. So if I look at myself back just as I was starting my business, just as I was transitioning from a corporate career in IT to being a business owner, I'm a completely different person. I'm so much more confident. I'm so much better at selling, at marketing, at speaking, at you know relating to people, at all these different things that I was just so weak at before I started the business. I actually think because of the business, I learned and I improved and I focused on different areas of growth and transformed my life and transformed my business. So one of the things you've got to realize though is that transformation doesn't just happen at the business level, it happens at a life level. So if I look at the friend circle I hang around now, it's a very different circle to when I started the business, right? When I started the business, I used to hang around with most you know, co-workers, people from my high school or university, people from sports teams, things like that, people from outside of entrepreneurial circles. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a different thing. But when you're really into the business, when you're living and breathing business every single day, you could 
change your friendship circles because the things you're thinking about, the things you're talking about, reading about and watching and just you know losing sleep over is so different to what the rest of the people are going through, right? Everybody else has got a solid paycheck or they should have a solid paycheck. They've got a little bit more security than entrepreneurs do. And you know, the things are just very, very different, right? As entrepreneurs, we're on this wildly different journey, unpredictable journey. There's amazing highs and amazing lows. And what I found over time is that I've just built this circle and network of amazing fellow entrepreneurs. And we talk about things like how to find good staff, how to grow your cash flow and grow your profits and you know what the new trends are, what we should be jumping on, what we're investing in. The conversations get so different to the conversations I was having prior to this. Um, and you'll see that in all aspects of your life, you might very well become a different person, right? You will become the person that your business needs you to be to get it to the level that you want it to grow to. So that's something that you've got to be really aware. There's a lot of difficult conversations in that there's a lot of change that you have to manage but ultimately you're the one who has to decide hey is that worth it right is it worth chasing your entrepreneurial dreams building your business if it means potentially having to sacrifice some of the friends you hang out with now is it worth sacrificing your nights out and staying you know staying home and just reading and learning is it worth pushing your comfort zones and you know it's pushing to the edge of your boundaries to try and close a deal, right? I'm not saying, you know, don't do anything shady, please, but I'm just saying as an introvert, it was really hard for me to sell. But so I had to push to my boundaries every single time and push my comfort zone to close deals, right? Like, is that something that you are comfortable doing or you are able to accept to grow to become the entrepreneur that you need to be? So that being said, um, if you want to find out more about, you know, the skills that you need to grow a business, I've got another video on here and it's going through the top five business and life books that helped me to build this, uh, this million dollar business I've got. And it's quite, you know, and it's helped me to become a multimillionaire in my thirties. So go and check out that video. It should be around here somewhere and I'll see you on the other side. Cheers.